Hi everyone, I'm Ragnar Pitla, D3 Software Solutions Architect. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to make the video on mastering the art of D3 Software Fendo Solutions Architect. I would like to talk about some technical skills and soft skills. So as we get into the thing, uh, first thing I would like to talk about is understanding financial processes. Basically, when I got into ERP, I came from CRP land. So I was a I was a I was a business systems analyst. Then I turned into a functional consultant, and then I turned into a solutions architect. Overall. One of the key things that I learned over the years was basically this was one of the key books that helped me into understanding financial accounting with Microsoft D365 ERP. Uh, there are some key things that I have learned in this book, uh, especially this book is something that helped me understand the finance aspect of it. So if you want to get into f and space, the first thing is going to be APAR and other things. So finance is the key thing. Uh, some of the key things that I've learned through the book and also through other certifications that I'm going to list down uh, below in, and also I'll post them on my LinkedIn is fundamentals of finance and accounting, understanding the finance aspect, how ERP works. Uh, this book also goes into how D365 works with financing uh, slash accounting standards. Uh, I'm working with a client where I have to work with IFRS accounting. I have to work with local gap accounting. Those are the key things that you would learn. Uh, also, I'm working with some other company where I was letting the company go public, so understanding uh, 10K, 20 a uh, a few other things, IS21, how the foreign currency evaluation need to be set up in f and to comply with these rules and stuff. So those are the key things that I learned, one from this book, two from other certifications that I'm going to list down below. Uh, so one of the key things is most people think solutions architect is uh, both technical and functional. You don't need to have full technical expertise, but uh, there is a there is a line where you can draw yourself to say, if you know certain technical skills, you can understand and help your developers. Uh, one of the key things for me as a solutions architect was not just me believing in a solution, but making sure I get that solution delivered through my developers, through my functional consultants. So understanding the limitations of technology and also understanding the limitations of functiona functionality, you, do, you also have to have this ability to see what customization you need to do, how much you can do as a customization. Uh, so I will dive deep into a few other things and some examples that I have had over the years uh, here at ERP. So one of the things is having strong domain knowledge. Uh, finance is composed of various things. It's not just finance and operations, finance and operations. So it's not just finance. It's not just accounting. It's n it's supply chain management falls under d 3 and uh, HR, project management, uh, so there are other fields as well. In one of the examples for me is I worked in a manufacturing industry company where I was trying to understand the process of supply chain dynamics, uh, industry specific challenges that are crucial. Uh, I've implemented in, um, intelligent auto management recently for my re recent company. Uh, so I had to understand uh, what's happening within the supply chain, understanding the inventory management, uh, understanding inventory control. Uh, there is a new feature that came called inventory visibility. So how we ever using inventory visibility with IOM. Uh, so having strong domain knowledge is a key thing. Uh, it's not a specific, It's not that you will have domain knowledge of everything, but one of the key things I'm going to specify later is working in different companies, understanding each domain specifically, and working with... Uh, I worked as a functional consultant to gain a lot of my knowledge before I even became a solutions architect. Uh, the other one is mastering D365 f and functionalities uh, in terms of in f and as well, there are certain functionalities you can master. Uh, one of the key things I would talk is like, I was working at a retail client where I had to maximize the revenue and customer satisfaction. I came from CRM, so I used to develop, I used to develop and I was a business function analyst slash functional analyst in CRM. So customer satisfaction was a key thing for me. So we need to look deep into understanding of how those two can be integrated, CE and f and uh, and things like that. And then here I was trying to work mostly on effectively managing the discounts and pricing strategies. So how do we apply discounts in a, a CE? Uh, how we do the... Um approvals for a certain kind of discounts and those things that I was working on. So mastering some certain f functionalities in alignment with other D3 products like Power Apps and other things I'll speak in later. 
Uh, so this is one of the other things. Our data modeling expertise. So I worked in healthcare industry for a really long time. Uh, one of the things for healthcare is bo mostly the security, the compliance, and other aspects of it. Uh, masking, falling under HIPAA regulations. Uh, how do you mask certain social security numbers and other things that within a customer profile that you have and you get and who has access. So data modeling and understanding these aspects was one of the key thing. And not only in that aspect, but also data modeling in terms of how do you use dual right? How do, what kind of uh, REST API or OData or what kind of uh, service do you want to use based on one, increasing performance, but also reducing the cost on uh, types of middleware or Azure functions or other things that you're using. So uh, this is one other space where you can have and gain some experience. Uh, and the other one is customizing and configuration. Like I was speaking earlier, you need to have this um, understanding of what level of customizations it does. Like, uh, can you provide to the client based on knowing how many updates Microsoft is going to do? Is it going to touch that functionality? It does this customization withstand the cycle, the one, like one version cycle. I created a video on how to do the upgrades in Microsoft Dynamics. I'll link it below as well. So understanding that and going to that level of customizations, right? So understanding the skills of understanding each field, where it's used, uh, what kind of things are being done. Uh, so for me in real estate, one of the real estate project I was consulting uh, there I was trying to understand uh, how do we use these lease and tenant relationship and how they want to see within the uh, within the form how, how would it make best use for them was one of the examples uh, and the next one is integration mastery right so one of the key things is FNO is not I know FNO is like a whole solution for ERP for everything you need to do, uh, but uh, I'm also working with uh, uh, supply chain, right? So one of the key things for us was the transportation management. One of the other thing that we implemented in IOM was the FedEx integration, right? Uh, we had providers, but the providers were slow. So Microsoft was quick to understand that these providers are uh, using Power Apps was slow for us to integrate in terms of getting the DOM logic, like understanding uh, the inventory where it is and calculating all this through Power Apps was a bit slow. So they went with API for FedEx right now in IOM. So understanding that integrations, how do you integrate with which one, uh, using middleware, using Azure functions, there are a lot of other things. But for me, integrating with a third-party TMS system, third-party 3PL, like warehousing system, uh, those were a few things that are for order fulfillment and other things were what I worked on. Uh, so understanding where you can master integration integrations, uh, and also looking at your job profile, what kind of jobs you're applying, you can look at what kind of integrations they might need and other things you can understand. Um, like we were speaking, power, plaf power platform familiarity, understanding where you could utilize the power platform, uh, given, given you can use the data lake, given you can use the Synapse or other things. One of the key things is I was working with an e-commerce slash retail company before uh, recently, uh, and then those guys use uh, power platform for uh, tracking orders, inventory, uh, and basically they use mostly for inventory updates and stuff, but using that power platform to integrate with F and O, and then updating updating them live through Dual Right and other options is where uh, Power Platform familiarity will help you with creating solutions within the day within using the current data like or data from F and O directly through Power Apps and other things. Uh, for security and compliance, as we spoke about HIPAA and other regulations, data encryption is something key when handling customer data. I worked with healthcare, like I said before, uh, where we had to do some other um, like masking of of certain data for certain groups, certain users, and things like that. But also, I worked in UK uh, and other other European countries. Uh, I worked for Germany and other companies as well, where uh, falling under compliance with GDPR. Uh, there are different regulations that you need to follow and understand. Uh, one of the other things is compliance in terms of SOX compliance. Uh, you need to understand uh, how you can utilize or build your system to be SOX compliant for you to go public with your financial data, with your customer more data and other things as well. Uh, so the data encryption is something uh, that's key if you are into healthcare, financial sector, especially in if your company is going public and other things like that. Uh, so the key thing that also this is what I have learned is 
it's not just the technical skills, sometimes understanding the soft skills. As a solutions architect, I was a business systems analyst before, so I was able to work with uh, with certain groups and understand and talk to them every day. So I had some soft skills before, but when you become a solutions architect, you need to enhance them a bit more because you are actually providing a solution. You're not, you are not only understanding, you're asking the right questions and stuff. Uh, some of the key things I've learned are like effective communication. Uh, basically, it's not just what the what they are wanting, but understanding and explaining them the benefits of the solutions that you're providing, and also giving them options of solutions and explaining why the solution that you have mentioned is more effective than the other ones. Uh, and the other one is continuous learning. Uh, I created a, one of the videos recently about Microsoft certifications, how they can help you and other things as well. As a solutions architect, you need to take other functional aspects. So as we were taking, talking about other functionals and other fields, one of the key things I learned is you have to get into SCM, you have to get into HR, human resource, project management. These other fields as well you can learn through both uh, to certifications, but there is also other ways to learn. You can either gain experience by working in different teams. Uh, you can also stay up to date uh, with all the new updates that are happening, getting on Microsoft Learn, being on the uh, communities that are within LinkedIn, uh, So and also people like me and few other solutions acting and others are posting always about what's coming up what's new uh, but getting certified uh, please go back and watch my video if you need to more need learn more about how you can get other certifications and you might use microsoft learn path right so the other key things i could speak are there are three other things that i was learning uh, these are specific to what i have learned and i thought these might add value to you if you are trying to become either a new solutions architect or you are already there but you're trying to build some interpersonal skills one of the key things for me was being a good listener Right, uh, we have two years. Like Marcus Aurelius, I'm a sto uh, I believe in stoicism. He says about you have two years for a reason. Uh, so one of the things about that is to understand, like when you're in a meeting, always try to listen more and talk less, at least in the first few meetings, because the more you observe, the more you understand. Ask good questions and make sure you get the right answers. Uh, so also the other thing I have learned is presenting the complex technical aspects into visuals sometimes. I use uh, Miro and few other tools. Uh, I, d I do like Visio, but I get into Miro because it's kind of automatic or using uh, using other tools too. Sometimes for these videos and other things, I'm using Canva. Sometimes I use Canva to explain some complex technical things into uh, like far normal ways. I'll put one of the screenshots here about layers that I've recently done. Uh, and also being able to build relationship with customers and other members, right? So again, trust within not just the managers and the developers, but also with the functional business users, uh, the accountants, the one at the uh, one at each level, you need to have good communication with them and understanding and building that relationship that they can come to you with any question. Uh, you can ask them questions so that you feel make them feel engaged. Uh, I always try to make everyone engage. One of the key things for me when working with some functional consultants recently was um, I know how to do certain things. I've done them like 10, 100 times before. But one of the key things for me was when I had to train this person, my goal was not just to show him, but also guide them through the process. I made them share the screen. I took my time to teach them because you know, once once you teach them, next time you don't have to be on 100 calls with them. So understanding those kind of things was very helpful for me uh, in, in helping and gain, gaining trust, but also like educating my colleagues and stuff into becoming uh, to a next level where I was or also learning from some other people because in Power Apps and few other places, uh, I worked with some other developers working in Azure. Uh, I worked with some great talent who helped me understand how the key walls work and uh, other things in terms of in-depth and creating uh, secrets, app IDs, and other things as well. I just used to sit down with them and then just watch them do it and learn as I grow. Uh, so it's very good for you to like keep building the trust and saying learn some and also provide some. So that that way it's a back and forth. It's not just you're uh, pushing information onto someone. Uh, so as you take and receive information, they feel like we are at the same level and gain that confidence from each one. Um, so my, this was my experience so far. So like we said, mastering F&O solutions is a blend of both 
technical mastery as well as some crucial soft skills so keep practicing what you know keep uh, and also like try to learn more things as you grow as well uh, and if you need any questions or if you have any uh, suggestions for me please feel free to comment below uh, or uh, i'm looking forward to make another video on just the finance aspect how we can do dual currency and fndo and few other things as well so stay tuned and uh, thank you for watching uh, please like and subscribe if possible it feels weird to say but i'm happy that you guys are watching and it gives me some encouragement to do these videos more so thank you so much have a great evening or a good day uh, thanks everyone bye also just a quick update i'm launching a new series called unwinding opportunities basically i'll be sitting down with some clients or people i've worked with before or people i've met on linkedin so we can have conversations with each other and understand their success stories their pain points how they have been to where they are uh, what are their suggestions on how to get to that place so stay tuned and please watch my new show called Un unwinding opportunities so thanks again have a good day uh, bye